Hello, Coach Rosa Seward here. I am the CEO of Brick House Cardio Club in Stafford, Virginia. I'm also a personal trainer, a group fitness instructor, and a Plate by Zumba uh, coach. Today, we're going to talk about our lesson seven, fiber and the digestive health, which is written by Dr. Neil Barnard. What is fiber? It's the roughage that's found only in plants. You'll find fiber in fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, legumes, and whole grains, but you will not find it in meats, dairy products, or in eggs. Fiber acts like a sponge in our digestive system, and it absorbs the sugar from our, our gut. It's important because it also promotes permanent weight loss by filling us up with less calories. In fact, just 14 grams of fiber cuts calories by 10%. Now, over the last uh, 50 to 100 years, our society has shifted in a diet that's uh, used to be high in fiber and low in sugar to one that's just the opposite. Now we have low fiber, high sugar diets. Our ancestors actually ate uh, 50 to 100 grams of fiber every day versus the 10 to 15 that we consume today. And that basically if you eat foods that are typically found in boxes, packages, cans, refined processed foods, then you're guaranteed to eat less fiber than those who eat whole, unrefined and unprocessed foods. There are two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble fibers. Soluble fiber dissolves in water or gets gooey like oatmeal. It helps to lower your cholesterol and blood sugar levels. It's literally, it literally captures the cholesterol in our diet and pulls it out of our body. About one fourth of the food, um, uh, or one fourth of the fiber in foods is soluble fiber. Now you're gonna find it in oats, barley, beans, legumes, and vegetables like carrots, celery, cucumbers, zucchini, and tomatoes. On the other hand, insoluble fiber does not dissolve in water, but it also helps you get fuller faster and it keeps you fuller longer. About one, about three fourths of fiber in foods are insoluble fibers. Uh, you'll find it in fruits such as grapes, prunes, apple skins, pear skins, berries, and in vegetables such as beets, celery, carrots, cabbage, turnips, cauliflower, broccoli, rhubarbs, red shards, uh, asparagus, kidney beans, potato skins, bran, wheat, rice, corn, and even popcorn. Insoluble fiber helps food pass through our digestive tract like a scrub brush, so it also prevents constipation. <clears throat> Most people need about 40 grams of fiber per day, although the average person gets about 10 to 15. Now, if you're older than 40, it's very important to have lots of fiber in your diet because um, both types of fiber help to control estrogen and testosterone hormones, which both fuel cancers. Fiber removes the excess hormones and carcinogens from our body more rapidly. Therefore, uh, we also say that fiber is cancer fighting. Now fruits have about three grams of fiber. So if you eat an apple, a banana, and an orange, you've consumed about nine grams of fiber. Vegetables average about four grams of fiber. So three servings of vegetables will yield you 12 grams of fiber. Beans have seven grams of fiber per serving. A serving is about a half a cup. <clears throat> Beans are actually considered the champion food because not only do they contain fiber, but they also contain uh, protein, iron, and calcium. I always say, go lean on the beans. You'll hear my students all the time saying that they stocked up on lots of beans because I always say that. Um, one of the complaints about beans is usually gas. That's the number one complaint. And if you do have that problem, I would recommend that you start with smaller servings and even smaller beans. So maybe black beans or lentils. And then work your way up to larger servings and larger beans such as pinto beans or kidney beans. Make sure your beans are cooked thoroughly that is another way to avoid gas. Even uh, beans that are canned, um, if you rinse your beans and you find that they're a little al dente, a little bit harder than they should be, then you, you want to cook them a little bit longer. Um, and make sure that if you make your own beans, you rinse them, you soak them a couple of hours or even overnight, and then you cook them. When you are eating fruit, you wanna make sure that you eat the skin or the peel on the fruit. This is where you're going to find that good fiber. 
And this brings us to our digestive health. Our mouth, esophagus, stomach, small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas all work together to break down the food in our digestive tract. Digestive juices are added starting uh, with your mouth, the saliva in your mouth, and it finishes in the intestine. Your digestive tract is hugely affected by the foods that you eat, breaks down the food, and if there's little fiber, constipation is going to occur, GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease or acid reflux or heartburn is going to occur. In addition, gallstones, which are made of cholesterol, can easily form. Picture this, the gallbladder is, is nestled under the liver and it holds on to bile or digestive juices until you eat. Those juices are then sent to your digestive tract to absorb food. Sometimes stones can form in those juices if you have high levels of cholesterol in your body. But with proper diet, gallstones can be avoided. So you wanna have high amounts of fiber, which will aid in that process. The lack of fiber in your diet will contribute to diabetes, heart disease, obesity, cancers, and other chronic illness. In fact, uh, studies show that a, an addition of high levels of fiber to your diet is just as effective as diabetes medicine in lowering blood sugar levels, except that you don't have the hot, uh, bad side effects. Also, if you increase the amount of fiber to 40 grams per day, you won't need to take probiotics. Um, if you usually go towards yogurt for that, your body will actually take care of that job on its own as long as you have enough fiber. And how do you know if you are eating enough fiber? How do you know? Well, here's your homework assignment. I'd like for you to write down everything you eat in one day. In our private Facebook group, you will see a document called the Fiber, Sor fiber Score Resource Document. Here, You'll see a list of foods that you consume and a, a point, a, a number of points assigned to each food. So write down what you eat, take a look at that document, add uh, the score um, for every, every food that you eat. For example, if you had an apple, then you'll see a score of three, which is three grams. If you've had um, some broccoli, then you'll see a four, which is four grams. Add those numbers up so that at the end of the day, you'll know whether you need to increase the amount of fiber that you are consuming. It might just mean that you have a, an additional cup of beans every day or um, increase the amount of fruit that you're eating if you're not typically eating enough fruit or increasing the amount of vegetables. So I look forward to seeing your scores posted in our private Facebook group. And I look forward to coming back to discuss the glycemic index and glycemic load, which was written by Dr. Mark Hyman in the Plate by Zumba program. Stay tuned and I look forward to your responses. Thanks so much.